In the year 465 AD, Rome stands at the very brink of destruction. However, it is not looking to go down without a fight. The West and the East have entered talks and are now planning one of the largest invasions in Roman history. They wish to expel Genseric the Vandal, who, at the invitation of a Roman general, entered North Africa and seized all the territory from the Western Roman Empire. Without access to the fertile lands of North Africa, the West will be unable to feed its masses of people and unable to provide for its legions of armies. If, if the West and the East are unable to reclaim North Africa, the West will soon surely succumb to famine, starvation, and desertion. This at a time when above all else, Rome desperately needs its legions to protect against the masses of hordes migrating in to escape the mini ice age, which is taking hold over Northern Germania. This is Grim Battaglia, and you're watching my documentary on the siege of Carthage in the Battle of Cape Bon, 456 AD. With a loyal emperor seated on the west and determined to retake North Africa at all costs, Emperor Leo began preparations to embark on one of the most audacious invasions ever planned. He would build over a thousand ships and raise over a hundred thousand men, and with a joint attack from the Western Roman Empire, oust the Vandals and retake all of North Africa for Rome, thus resecuring the Empire's grain supply and securing the Empire's future and the security of the Mediterranean Sea. This was not going to be a cheap invasion by any means, so Emperor Leo began looking for money anywhere that he could. He worked to lenders from across the Mediterranean world, and at the end of the day, he found that this invasion would cost almost the entire year of the Eastern Empire's GDP. This invasion was either going to succeed, or it was going to bankrupt the Empire in the attempt. Hearing of Emperor Leo's plan, the Vandals would call their pirates. Emperor Leo had secured his funding and constructed one of the largest fleets ever in human history, with over 1,100 ships and 100,000 men aboard them. To ensure that there be no backstabbing, Emperor Leo wanted to make sure that the East and the West were now one big happy family. To do this, the Eastern Empire married his only daughter to the Western Emperor's son and he instructed the Western Emperor to marry his only daughter to the barbarian King Ricimir. Afterwards, Emperor Leo's wife compelled him to name his brother-in-law, Admiral Basiliscus, as head of the Eastern Roman Navy. With all his pieces in place, the East and the West declared a joint declaration of war upon the Vandal Kingdom. The plan was simple. In the west, the emperor would send his men to go island hopping and claim the island of Sicily so that they could provide a constant stream of supplies to the east's forces in North Africa. The eastern fleet would sail towards Carthage, the new capital of the Vandal Kingdom, and blockade it, completely trapping the men inside. A second force in the east would land in Tripoli and travel across North Africa, quelling any resistance that they faced and closing the trap by placing a blockade all around the city and encasing it in a massive siege with no escape for the men trapped inside. With their pieces in place, the East and the West embarked upon their great crusade against the Vandal Kingdom. In Sidonia, the West faced little resistance while well, the East was able to make a safe and secure landing in Tripoli. The West was able to quickly move on and capture Sicily, securing a grain supply for the Eastern Army. Meanwhile, in Africa, with their massive numbers, the Eastern Army was able to quickly crush any Vandal resistance that they encountered. However, most cities and tribes opted to join the Eastern force rather than try to fight this massive army. Meanwhile, Admiral Basiliscus moved in and prepared to embargo and blockade the capital city of Carthage. 
All was going according to plan. The city of Carthage was completely surrounded by two enormous eastern armies on both sides. And meanwhile, the west securely held Sicily and was able to supply them indefinitely. There seemed to be absolutely no way that the east could possibly lose this campaign and fail to reconquer the Vandal Kingdom. To assassinate their general. Once the general was dead, Brickmer ordered that no food, supplies, or soldiers be sent from the west to support the eastern invasion of Africa. The East was now on their own, but with their overwhelming numbers, it was still a sure thing that they could defeat the Vandal Kingdom. It seemed completely impossible that they'd be able to lose this battle. Admiral Basiliscus had over a thousand ships and a hundred thousand men at his disposal, and he'd completely blockaded the Vandal Harbor, trapping them inside, leaving them with absolutely nowhere to run. In mere days, the city would likely starve or be forced to surrender. If they did not, the Eastern Romans would be able to easily overwhelm the city and crush any resistance that they faced. However, it was at this time that Genseric, the King of the Vandals, offered a surrender to Admiral Basiliscus personally. Genseric the Vandal asked Admiral Basiliscus for five days to prepare his men to give a formal surrender. Why Admiral Basiliscus would grant this request is a mystery to history. And there are many theories about it. One theory goes that Admiral Basiliscus was actually plotting against the emperor. He wanted this invasion to fail. The emperor had sunk so much money and time and resources into the invasion that if it failed, surely the people would rise up against him and depose him. And thus, Admiral Basiliscus would be able to claim the throne for himself. However, if this was his plan, it was a very very stupid plan. And that's because Admiral Basiliscus was in charge of this entire invasion. If the invasion failed, sure, it would look bad for Leo, but it would even look even worse for him. He would look like the fool who lost a battle where he had over five to six times as many men as his enemy. Now, the other theory goes that Admiral Basiliscus was just stupid. He had the Genseric and the Vandals completely surrounded. They had no escape, nowhere to run. Why Admiral Basiliscus would grant Genseric and the Vandals five days of rest and peace is unknown besides complete stupidity. However, Admiral Basiliscus did indeed grant Genseric and his Vandals the five days. But Genseric didn't use this time to prepare to surrender. He used this time to reinforce his fleet, arm all the people in Carthage, and prepare for a counterattack. On the fourth night, Genseric and his vandals gathered all men who could fight in the city and armed them with anything they could find and placed them upon their ships. From the harbor, Admiral Basilisk and his men watched what was happening. However, for reasons unknown, they didn't raise the alarm, they didn't raise the guard, and they left no watch to prepare for what was about to happen. It's speculated that if Admiral Basiliscus was not actually purposely betraying Emperor Leo, then he probably thought that Genseric and the Vandals were preparing to retreat and disembark for foreign land where there would be no bother to the Eastern Roman Empire. However, Genseric and his Vandals had a very different plan. In the front row of ships, they put all flammable objects that they could find and set them alight. After this was done, they sailed out to meet the Admiral's fleet. Again, confounding on Admiral Basiliscus' incompetence, he had all his ships put 
an extremely tight formation to guard the harbor, where they couldn't sail away or maneuver or escape an oncoming attack. When the men aboard the ship saw the fire coming at them, it was too late. Massive explosions rung out among the fleet, and in almost an instant, the thousand strong fleet and the hundred thousand men vanished beneath the waves for eternity. Kinsarik and his vandals sent out the rest of their men and cleaned up all the remaining ships and survivors, killing them in the waters where they struggled against the waves. Admiral Basiliscus somehow managed to escape this. He retreated back to the Eastern Roman Empire for safety. Tenseric and his vandals took their ships and looped around, hitting General Aspar of the African legions on their side. General Aspar and his legions were forced to go into a full retreat. The Admiral and his men fell back. The Vandals then launched a counterattack, retaking Sicily for their kingdom. They would follow this up by reclaiming all the islands that they'd lost in the war thus far, before returning to Carthage secure in their kingdom. Then Sarek and his Vandals were able to claim a resounding victory. Extraordinarily outgunned and outnumbered, they were able to fool Admiral Basiliscus and pull victory from what seemed like sure defeat. Meanwhile, Admiral Basiliscus was hated throughout the Eastern Empire. He was forced to hide in the Hagia Sophia to protect himself from all the citizens who wanted to see him dead. Eventually, the Emperor's wife convinced him to give a royal pardon to his foolish and incompetent brother-in-law. Admiral Basiliscus was then exiled, never to return to the city as long as Emperor Leo sat upon the throne. Historians speculate that the loss of this battle spilled the end of the Western Roman Empire. Without the food that they desperately needed from North Africa, the Western Romans would be unable to protect themselves from the barbarian invasions and would be unable to feed or supply their men appropriately to fight off all the threats that they faced. Meanwhile, in the East, the empire was crippled for decades trying to recover from all the manpower and money that they lost in this embarrassingly botched invasion. Ironically, Admiral Basiliscus, if he was indeed plotting against the emperor, would eventually get his wish. When Emperor Leo died, Emperor Basiliscus would accede to the throne. However, his incompet incompetency at war also spread to his incompetency at running a realm. Within only two years, the people of his empire rose against him and demanded his head. He would die in office as a result of his incompetence. Likewise, in the West, Emperor Anthenimus would soon die. It was heavily speculated that King Ricimer was responsible for poisoning him so that he could claim the throne. Ricimer would indeed this has been my documentary on the 